Hey folks, David Watts with another Luminar 2018 video for you. Hope you find these helpful. If you do, give us a thumbs up if you don't mind and subscribe. And that's all very helpful to us. Really appreciate that. This is, um, I guess, sort of three things I wanted to do in this video. Number one, um, this is a sort of first impressions of the new Fujifilm XF 80mm. Uh, that's an f2.8 macro lens. And uh, for those of you that uh, enjoy Fuji cameras like I do, I thought you might uh, like some first quick impressions as well as some uh, sample images. Uh, secondly, uh, this will be a, just a quick first impression of Luminar 2018, the latest, greatest version, which is 1.10. Uh, I just got notified today, so I think it is out brand new today, and thought I'd show you uh, just a little bit about it. Uh, there's a whole list of uh, new things, uh, new capabilities, or revised functionality, improved functionality. I'm not going to go through that list, but just show you a thing or two that might be useful. And then third, uh, just a quick view of uh, how I edit uh, a couple of photos. And maybe, maybe that will also be helpful uh, to you. So anyway, first thing first, uh, Fujifilm XF 80mm, uh, quick impressions. I like it a lot. No lens is perfect. Every lens is a bit of a trade-off. Uh, this lens has image stabilization. So I love my Fujifilm XF 90mm. Fantastic for portraits. I do like shooting portraits at nighttime. The 90mm doesn't have image stabilization. can make it a little bit tough. The, uh, the 80mm, though, image stabilization. And seems to me very good image stabilization. And the lens itself is also very sharp. Some have wondered if it's a little too sharp uh, for portrait work. I don't think so. I'll show you uh, um, uh, a way to address that if you, if you find uh, that a lens might be too sharp uh, for portrait work. Uh, but, uh, you know, one of the, the key questions I had is, do you still get good uh, bokeh in the background? Because that's nice if you're uh, trying to shoot portraits. It gives you nice separation from your subject uh, to the background. And so I'll show you a couple of those things. First and foremost, this obviously is not a portrait per se. This was just at a restaurant where I had dinner this evening. I just wanted to show this. This is a handheld shot. Image stabilization is on. And this is one-seventh of a second, quite slow. But, and I was focused on this uh, sign here, it's not perfectly sharp, but I wasn't really trying all that hard either. One seventh seems pretty decent to me for an 80 millimeter lens. Um, and again, image stabilization doing a nice job. Number two uh, on the bokeh and the background, uh, you'll see it has, I think, reasonably pleasing sort of bokeh. As you get toward the edges of the image, uh, they, take, they take on a, a sort of cat eye appearance, people call that, because it looks like a cat eye, of course. Um, the uh, 56 millimeter 1.2 or the 90 millimeter 2.0 uh, generally won't do that so much, but you get a little of it in this uh, lens, the 80 millimeter, but not bad, and I think it's it's quite reasonable. Let me flip to a different image though and show you a different attribute that I noticed and others have noticed, uh, or maybe just starting to notice. Now here's a here's an image where we've got better separation between the background. I'll say a bit more about the image in just a moment. But if you zoom in, you, can, you maybe can even see it right here. But if you go into 100%, uh, what do you see in the areas of uh, bokeh? And that is you see a, a spiral sort of pattern. And you won't see it on every one of these. You don't see it so much here in the red. But you'll see it in some of these uh, bokeh images, maybe even a bit stronger here. And what in the world is that? Well, um, it's classical onion ring uh, bokeh, they call it. It seems to appear mostly in lenses with an aspherical uh, lens element. Um, it's a big fancy term I don't completely understand <laughs> each day. Uh, some days I think I get it, other days I don't. But bottom line, because of the manufacturing process, it leaves very, very tiny little imperfections in the lens. And those can show up. I think Panasonic has found a way to really minimize it but you will see it in this lens. There is a bit of that. So I'll suggest something we might do. Now it may be that for you, that's, that may, means this lens is not uh, right for you, but I think it's still an outstanding lens with an awful lot to offer. 
So having said that, let me show a couple of ways we might edit this image and make it a little bit better. And in so doing, we might see just a couple of new things. Uh, one in particular I wanted to show you about this version 1.10. First of all, uh, the image is crooked, and we should straighten it up a bit. So let's do that because that uh, otherwise that just sort of is a glaring thing that, that sticks out a bit. Uh, oh, and by the way, let me let me reset this because it's when when you're trying to straighten an image, it's also good to keep the aspect ratio the same uh, unless for some reason you, you'd rather not. Uh, so I like to make sure to check that. Uh, and then I'm looking for something with a straight line. So I think the top of the glass here, as you can probably see here, or kind of the bottom of the glass. This is a little glass uh, candle vase, a little candle flickering in there. So I like that a lot. Uh, so that to me feels just a lot better right away. Uh, the second thing uh, we might do uh, is add uh, filter, the, the uh, Accent AI filter, I think is often a good one, just to kind of improve the photo real quickly. Another thing we might add is, um, let's try clarity, and let's also, we'll try some saturation and vibrance. Um, you might want to boost that image way up, something like that. It can start to look a little cartoonish. We'll give it just a little bit of uh, enhancement in the saturation area. You might like uh, to add clarity, and that'll bring a certain crispness uh, to the image. If you turn it off, you might focus down here in the lower right corner of the tabletop. It's just sort of in focus. Let's turn that clarity back on, and you'll see how that crispens things up a bit, and turn it off. So, here's the point though. With it on, it's affecting the whole image. I would like it to affect really just the, the glass vase here. So, come in here, click the brush, and in this case, don't start painting because if you take a look at the mask, that effect has been applied to the whole image. Instead, start erasing that effect back here in the bouquet. You don't want to make that bouquet any sharper necessarily, especially if you might like to minimize those uh, little swirly patterns uh, just a bit. What we're doing, and you can see it now when we uh, you know, turn, turn that on to see the effect, uh, see the mask, is that we are removing uh, this effect from essentially the background and everything except maybe the table and uh, the, the little candle vase itself. And so if we're happy with that, what we've done is we've added some Christmas uh, to our object and yet we've not overly accentuated the, the sharp edges of the bouquet. We've left that kind of blurry and out of focus. One other thing we could do, though, is add structure. Now, again, if, you know, if I'm editing the way I like, in this case, let's bring the structure up to make it even more crisp. But again, what I've done in doing that is I've essentially sharpened up the whole image. Let's turn it off. So notice this area right here, especially. Let's turn it back on. And you see how we really made that area kind of ugly. What I would do in this case is using the brush. And this time we're going to paint. I would paint that effect in. And I would paint it in just on uh, the candle uh, little glass itself and maybe the tabletop, just so that's nice and sharp. Again, if I want to see the effect, then you can sort of see where we've uh, done this painting. And usually you don't have to be super precise. Uh, the, the adjustments will sort of blend somewhat seamlessly. Uh, so let's uh, go back to it now. And so what we've got is, if I did this right, let me make sure. Yep, okay, so there's the area we painted. I need to click Done. There we go. Uh, so what we've got is an extra amount of sharpness uh, here on the foreground. And if I turn the image, if I turn the uh, filter off and back on, and you'll see the improvement here. And, and actually, in this case, it's still not quite as um, uh, faded out as I might like. And so the one other thing I could do is add another layer, another adjustment layer. 
and just add, excuse me, we'll do it this way. We'll add just another structure filter. In this case, we'll crank structure, sorry, wrong filter. It helps if you get the filters right. We're going to add structure right here. And in this case, we'll crank the structure uh, way down. Again, we don't want it everywhere. So let's paint it in just in this uh, area of bouquet. We don't need to see what we're doing here. Uh, we're just going to make that apply up here in this area to make the background just as kind of soft and uh, non-distracting as we can. All right, and again, you can see where we painted that. That's close enough for purposes of illustration. Okay, so anyway, now what we've got closer to being finished is um, nice, smooth, and well, we haven't totally eliminated the little swirls, but we've minimized them just a bit. We've got great separation from our foreground object and the background object. And if we look at where we started, that's where we started, and that's where we ended up. So it's almost like we, we shot some extra light right into that little uh, candle vase, and I think made a better image. Uh, one of the things, by the way, if you're like me and you like that bouquet effect, and not everybody likes it, but I like it a lot, um, to get this good bouquet, three key things. Get close to your subject. Get as close as you reasonably can. Number two, use a lens with a large aperture. So in this case, f2.8. If you could go even bigger, if you could go f2, f1.4, even better usually. Third thing, have some distance between your subject and the background lights. If your subject is right up against the lights, you're not going to get huge bouquet. So look, look, at, look at the other image we started with. I was focused on this. And because this is pretty far into the picture, depth-wise, and the lights were, you know, a little ways behind, still 5 to 10, maybe 15 feet, the, the bouquet just did not really get huge. Uh, but if I could have gotten real close to that little tabletop menu thing, uh, then the bouquet would have been even more impressive, If again, if you like that. So those three rules, get close to your subject, use a large aperture, and give lots of space behind your subject uh, to the lights uh, that you're working with. Now, having said all that, in this quick edit, what we did, we had our base layer here. We had a second layer here, and we'll just call, we can double click on this to name it. Let's we'll call it Soften Background. Okay. Now, the thing I noticed, uh, and I'm sure this wasn't in the previous version, but now that I've upgraded, I can't go back. When I have all these filters, so I used a little accent filter, a little clarity, a little saturation, a little structure on the base layer. I think this is a brand new filter. Somebody tell me if I'm dreaming it. But now I can tweak the, the application of all of those filters in one pass uh, in terms of sort of cranking them up or down. So if I crank it all the way down, that's back to the original image. And if bring it up, then I'm bringing it back in all the way to full application. So it's almost like with the filters, you can kind of get your ratio of structure and vibrance and, and clarity and all that right. And then if you want to tone it down just a bit, you can do that sort of in mass, so to speak. And I think that's a real helpful feature. Again, don't remember that in the previous versions. Uh, but it, it is handy. Now, someone will rightly point out, with, when I've got the second layer, like this softened background layer, we called it, I've always been able to come up here to opacity. And for that layer, I can lower the opacity, and thus I'm lowering the effect. I'm letting more of the underlying layers shine through. Um, so... The benefit, though, of this is I can't tweak opacity when I'm on the root layer, so to speak. On the base image, I can't tweak opacity because it is the bottom layer. There's no opacity to adjust. So this filter amount down here sort of does the same thing. It, it just allows me to tone down uh, the filters in case maybe I've overdone it a little bit. I wouldn't have to go tweak each one separately as long as I like the overall balance of the image. Anyway, maybe that's a lot, but I hope that might be useful to you. Again, uh, quick impression, Fujifilm uh, XF 80mm f2.8 macro. Great lens. Like it a lot. Great image stabilization. Very sharp. Bokeh does have some little swirls going on, some onion skin, but I think it's uh, not a showstopper. I think it's, it's still a great lens uh, to work with for its purposes. Uh, secondly, uh, new version 1.1. 
And again, another great uh, delivery from Luminar. I'm very happy about that, and that's one of the reasons I, I like the product, uh, frequent updates. And third, uh, maybe I showed you another way to, to edit your photos or to tweak it a little bit, maybe gave you something to consider. I always encourage you to take what I share, make it better, incorporate it, find a way to improve upon it. Uh, we're just trying to share ideas. Hope that helps a little bit. If you like what we do, give us a thumbs up, subscribe. We appreciate that. I'll put a link in the description if you like Luminar, if you need an upgrade, or if you want to try it for the first time, you can click on the link. Full disclosure, I'm an affiliate. I do get a little you know, it's a kickback. That's not the right word, but a little commission on that. But full disclosure, that helps us uh, keep making these videos and so forth. Anyway, hope you have a nice day. Hope it helps just a bit, and we'll catch you next time. Have a great day.